zebra rope swinging under the opening credits tells me all I need to know about how this movie will treat physics and science and logic. Okay, penguins and zebras in the same spot? That's some chicanery right there. And also, unlike peacocks, who everyone knows can fly, penguins are actually flightless birds, so this is someone's fantasy. Here's some math for you. Cartoon physics squared equals dream cartoon physics. The lion can catch up to the zebra running only on his back feet. Surprise! It was all a dream cliche. Also, I guess a treadmill is a creative way for him to get some exercise, but the Central Park Zookeeper is probably experiencing daily fits of anxiety over the possibility of a random visit from the representative of the Zoological Association of America, because all of these enclosures don't even come remotely close to meeting their standards. Alex! Do not interrupt me when I'm daydreaming! This zoo was apparently designed on a decommissioned mini golf course where they just installed a few three-foot fences and decided that was enough. Hoof mill? Is there a whole line of athletic equipment for animals in this universe? Put your mouth full. Ah! Right here. What the heck is this doing in there? It is a giant glass ball. That is a very good question. Why not hide something, say, in your mane? These aren't even on the shelf yet. Then where the f*** did he get it? Even in this universe, he's still just a lion. It's not like the Central Park Zoo merchandising department is running product by him for his approval. I guess security is so lax at this zoo that all the animals are able to easily escape their enclosures and basically roam free, allowing Alex to waltz into the gift shop and take whatever he wants. Also, based on this picture, Alex has pretty decent handwriting for a lion who has paw slash hand hybrids. They're still better than regular paws, but one would assume that he would still have a disadvantage. Also, there is a putter, which further supports my the zoo used to be a mini golf course theory. None of the people in all of these apartments back here notice the lion and zebra casually acting like friends. This zoo has a terribly unsafe safe and unsecure lion enclosure. Whoa, let's go! Did that giraffe just use the toilet? Um, I've been to the Central Park Zoo, and it looks nothing like this, but whatever. Cartoon, I guess. <laughs> this monkey fishes out coffee, a newspaper, and a bagel without even looking down at the trash can. This speaks either to the hyper-intelligence of this monkey, or the extreme predictableness of the general American zoo visiting public. Also, the zoo just opened, so the janitor didn't empty the trash last night. Nice job, dude. Ziploc! This is such a random brand shout-out, I wonder if Ziploc helped underwrite this movie. So this lion display is the lion standing on two feet on a pedestal, posing, surrounded by fireworks? That's actually incredible. I can't tell, is that blue steel? Given the context, it's probably La Tigra. Man, I wish the animals at my local zoo did cool stuff like this. They mostly hide, which is why a standard zoo visit for me is basically a high spot. Sexy Hippo ripoff from Fantasia. Add plus one more sin for making me write the word Sexy Hippo. After this picture was taken, I bet that MRI tech said to the photographer, excuse me, but there should be no electronic equipment near the MRI. And the photographer replied, but it's outside sitting in the grass. That can't be good for it either. Then the technician laughs slightly, snaps his neck, and drags him off. We've broken our last shovel. They've tunneled through concrete with a common plastic spoon. Just give them their freedom. They f***ing earned it, no? <laughs> Movie devotes too many seconds to fart noises. There is no visible reason Marty is able to hold anything. He's definitely past Mr. Ed on the anthropomorphism of equine scale, but he's clearly not at the BoJack Horseman level of being able to hold stuff. What continent is this? Manhattan. Even zebra New Yorkers think that they are so important that their island qualifies as a continent. I hope that person who threw that underwear is from another country, and his only exposure to American culture was a Tom Jones concert he once went to, and he is under the impression that Americans just throw underwear at anyone who is receiving praise. So each animal gets a personalized meal, served by their own separate chefs, and displayed on a literal silver platter made in their image. How much is admission to this f***ing zoo? Did he not get an actual dinner like the rest of them? The zoo may be actively trying to kill this giraffe. Are we sure this isn't the Copenhagen Zoo? You look like a monkey. You smell like one, two. two. <laughs> <laughs> I say. A monkey like their colleagues at the zoo? It's not just the penguins. All the animals here are racist. But, this is but, a highly but, refined but, type of but, food but, thing. You ever thought there might be more to life than steak, Alex? Alex temporarily forgets what steak was called. Is that a giant steak? As big as a lion's head? Or is this a weirdly small lion? What's eating him? All the stuff Marty just spelled out literally seconds ago is what's eating him, but later it will be Alex. Not gonna find a star like that in the wild. Helicopter. This helicopter appears out of nowhere and is stationary until Marty says what it is. Maybe this is one of San Andreas's magical helicopters that can do impossible things. The f***? Do they all have their own light switches? Clap on heater. Marty turned off the ambiance with a reverse Fonzie. Why is Zebra the only zoo inhabitant with tons of light on him during this pullback shot? You suck your thumb? Better question, you have thumbs? You know how I have that bladder infection and I have to get up every two hours? Well, you know how I have a giant bruise on my hand from you beating me with the fact that Melman is debilitatingly ill? I've been trying to avoid commenting on the way these characters look, because they're clearly stylized and I don't find anything wrong with that, really. I don't. But Melman's neck is too far from actual giraffe anatomy. I feel like I'm looking at a giraffe who has broken his neck. Maybe that's why he's so sick all the time. Mm-hmm, I know that's right. She's not just a hippo, she's the sassy black hippo friend. Saturday Night Fever existed. That's the whole joke. It wouldn't surprise me if Gloria was in the next Avengers movie. Maybe she could take over for Hawkeye. F*** Hawkeye. My aunt's constipation. This Let's just go ahead and add seven sins for every other terrible poop and pee joke in the movie. If you have any poo, it's gas. Wipe yourself with a leaf? It's not a latrine. You're biting my butt! Oh, come Gloria. 
That was not me. Zebra finds the only time Rockefeller Center skating rink is empty, but still lit up like it's open. If it wasn't a cartoon, I'd make this two cents. Finally, some people see these f***ing animals. Sadly, it's too late to keep the plot from happening. Yeah, that's right, a zebra. Right in front of me. Can I shoot it? America. Can I shoot it? Well, that depends on if it's a white zebra with black stripes or a black zebra with white stripes. Grand Central Station. It's grand and it's central. And it's a station. How invested in the physics of this cartoon should I be? I thought only the animals were stereotypical cartoons and their abilities, but here we have an old lady with super strength. Guys, we're running out of time. You know what would make this funnier? If he had a giant claw. Oh, he does. Great. Several large and potentially deadly animals have escaped from the zoo. And they send in the entire NYPD, the fire department, and just the most frightened guy from animal control. So are they in reality on all fours just roaring and they just think they're standing upright? Or do the humans notice that they're standing? You know what? Animated movie with ambiguously defined rules. In Madagascar 4, we learn that Alex is addicted to tranquilizers and has forever been chasing his first high. The boxes become conveniently lit when each animal starts talking. I have an appointment with uh, Dr. Goldberg at Melvin. 5. The stock paranoid nebbish character provided by David Schwimmer. Presumably they didn't want Woody Allen anywhere near a children's movie. This movie expects me to believe that they ship animals in Ark of the Covenant crates. Some more math! Penguins times 4 equals Liam Neeson. Person can't hear anything because they're wearing headphones, cliche. Why are they going all the way around Africa? Wouldn't it be faster to just use the Suez Canal and come from the north? I'm actually curious. Many sailors in the house? Okay, they fell off the ship right at Madagascar. Okay, fine. But only their four crates fell off the ship right here? Seriously? That's implausible as hell. Somehow, after being tossed by all these waves, Alex's box still has no water in it. I mean, he should be dead at the ocean floor at this point, no? DreamWorks has an unhealthy obsession with putting large quantities of things in its characters' mouths. Alex doesn't think to pull him out by his feet, thus manufacturing some more slapsticky situations. None of the other animals were exposed to water in their crates, but Gloria had access to these sea creatures. Alrighty, boys, fun's over. The f Do I even want to know what the fun was? The zebra either already knows how to surf and commune with dolphins, or learn that shit on the fly. Either way, sin. Do sea creatures live by different rules than land mammals? Why can't the dolphins talk? This is seriously out of control. It has been all of 22 seconds since the last pop culture reference. What could be worse than San Diego? Um, almost any American city, at least if the weather is a factor. But there's music, there's people! We'll or hyper-intelligent lemurs with a stereo. One of the two. Ooh. Alex turns into Dick Van Dyke for a second. I like to move it, move it. One of the pilots who crash-landed on Madagascar only had one CD on his plane. Reel to reel. Dooming these lemurs to be obsessed with reggae fusion house music from 1993. It was hungry. <laughs> <laughs> the Fusas have a caveman-like level of speech, while the lemurs are able to speak as well as the main characters. The Fusas may be dumb, but they really know how to prepare a salad. So do you have any live people? Uh, no. Madagascar is a very large island that is home to over 22 million people. I mean, if we had a lot of live people here, it wouldn't be called the wild. How would Maurice have any context for the wild if there are no people? Or how would any of them know what people are in the first place? Maybe this is San Diego after all. You would think being a zebra would be a disadvantage when it comes to building a shelter, but clearly it is not. Shut up, Spalding. Not hilarious Castaway Wilson joke is not hilarious. Alex conveniently found all of the necessary parts and pieces to make a Statue of Liberty, while also being a lion. The other hoved animals we've seen have been able to hold on to things. Melman is not. Why, you ask? Because f you, that's why. Just so we all understand each other, these boards spontaneously combusted. Done, you all to heck! At what point does a parent watching this with their kids decide to just put on an old movie instead? A good quarter of this film is just references to other films. King Julian is able to use the skeleton hand as an extension of his own hand. This movie was written by four people, and I'm pretty sure the script was just a bullet point list of fart sounds and half-remembered pop culture references from their childhood. This poor Chris Rock zebra spends the whole movie talking about how he wants to live in the wild, and the first thing he does is domesticate the place. Very impressive. It is impressive. He built a tiki bar in a couple hours without the use of opposable thumbs or fingers of any kind. It does kind of hit the spot, <laughs> doesn't it? It would have taken days for that freight ship to get from New York City to the east coast of Africa. When was the last time any of these animals ate? For real. It must be like a week. One hour, 25 minute movie probably only makes its runtime with bullshit like this American Beauty Rose Petal steak spoof, which makes less sense for a kid's movie than a Boogie Nights Anal in the Driveway parody. Also, associating Alex the Lion with Kevin Spacey's American Beauty character tells me ahead of time that the zebra is gay, and Hippo is having an affair with a real estate agent. And Giraffe is Wes Bentley, I guess. Weed slash steak supplier. For the record, again, this is an homage to a scene in American Beauty where a middle-aged man is having a daydream about f***ing his daughter's teenage friend. A children's movie is a really weird place for this. Welcome to Madagascar. Roll credits. Another vine attached to nothing. Regular river dancing is bad, but neck river dancing is worse. Did they practice this dance beforehand? Oh no, I really don't think I could. Okay. Acting like you don't want to do something, then suddenly saying you want to do it because you really wanted to do it the whole time, cliche. This heretofore totally tamed lion suddenly has feral instincts just because he's hungry and the plot needs a jump start. Excuse me. You're biting my butt! 
That's exactly what my college girlfriend said to me shortly before dumping me. What is a simple bite on the buttocks among friends? Movie backs me up on something I've been saying for years. Mr. Alex cannot stay here. He belongs with his own kind. Uh, that's racist. Gotta admit, I'm only half paying attention at this point. But are these two things here walking steaks with legs and mouths? Oh, hell, it's possible I ingested heroin without realizing it. Or Lion did. Marty, run! Lion is tricked into hunting his Central Park Zoo zebra buddy because, honestly, I wasn't paying attention. A chop run caught my eye for a moment, and when I came back to the movie, this was going on, and I felt compelled to sin it despite my personal ignorance. Of course, the lion survives this. He's voiced by Ben Stiller. You didn't think such a character was capable of death, did you? These zoo animals learn some hard lessons about the food chain, and while it's humorous, it's still largely filler for an animated movie with almost zero plot. Well, this kind of makes saving him in the last scene completely pointless. Also, this movie wants to imply life or death consequences, but only has the balls to do so via the death of an unimportant non-beloved character. Melman's dreams are coming true. Since it's clear the penguins can make things appear out of nowhere, why didn't he summon a more useful writing utensil, like a pen or a pencil? Also, he can't read, but he can write? Clearly not. Alex the Lion is still seeing steaks everywhere. Did we ever get a reason on that bullshit? Also, why are all these steaks so happy about being eaten in the near future? We are a great big part of it. Alex doesn't immediately eat Marty. What's going on again? I was only out of the room for however long it takes to pee. Is this the most forgettable, successful animated movie ever? I think it might be. The Fusas may be savages, but they are really into their garnishes. Alex? I'd call this an Alex the Lion ex machina moment if the entire freaking movie hadn't been obviously building to this point all along. Are fish not anthropomorphic? The spider was. And his heart is bigger than his stomach. And that's the story of how Alex the Lion decided to slowly starve to death rather than hurt his friends. The end. Maybe we could make a few side stops along the way. He said side stops, but what he meant to say was sequels. Ever since CinemaSins began, the most requested thing has been TV Sins, and now it's a reality. <gasps> Click the link in the description below to check it out. And now, the audio outtakes. This is your emergency broadcast system. Commencing at the siren, any and all crime will be legal for 12 continuous hours. You know what the Ukraine is? It's a sitting duck. A road apple, Newman. The Ukraine is weak. It's feeble. You're crazy. You're crazy. You're crazy. Now who'd like a cookie? Let's go to eat a damn snack. It's the circle of life. Hurry it up, I'm late. Who are you? He is a friend. No, no! The box! They can't transfer me! I'm not!